Hello everyone, it's the Fly Foot Doctor, Dr. Shiva Wale. I'm a foot and ankle specialist and surgeon out here in Houston, Texas. So today we're gonna to be talking about that interesting looking foot that I'm sure you've seen all around. And you've probably been wondering why it looks like that, what's going on, and maybe this rings a bell, rheumatoid arthritis. What has that to do with the foot? Well, in this video, I'm gonna break it down and hopefully by the end of this video, you would have a lot of your questions answered and you gain more insight as to what's going on. Let's get into it. So what is rheumatoid arthritis? Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease in where some of the cells of your immune system just decide that they just don't like the lining of your joints anymore. And they look at it and they see it as foreign. It's like, what is that? Who are you? Where are you coming from? Do we know you? And then they start to attack it. There is no known reason or cause of rheumatoid arthritis. However, later down the line in this video, I'll break down some of the risk factors that may predispose a, pay, a person to have rheumatoid arthritis. But in the general uh, scheme of things, essentially it's an autoimmune disease where your own immune cells is attacking nope. itself. It usually attacks the small joints in the body. It'll start maybe the fingers and the, the fingers and the hands, and especially as well the foot and the toes. And a lot of the times they're symmetrical. Now, because it's a systemic disease, it actually affects things symmetrically, meaning if it affects the big thumb here, it'll also affect the big thumb here and vice versa. The same exact thing that happens on the left oftentimes happens on the right. Now, typically it affects people or starts to manifest itself at the age, between the ages of 30 and 60. However, I personally have seen people and kids who have rheumatoid arthritis and it's already affecting their joints and they're starting to have some of the signs and symptoms that we'll get into later in this video. Normally you'd see between 30 and 60, but there are also early onset rheumatoid arthritis that we'll see as well as late onset rheumatoid arthritis. Now, how does rheumatoid arthritis actually affect the joints? Well, they actually attack something called the synovium. These are cells that line the joint. They help lubricate the joint, they help the joint move better, they help produce this fluid that just kind of makes your joint move appropriately. Well, what happens is in rheumatoid arthritis, your own immune system decides that it doesn't like the synovium anymore Bruh. and starts to attack it. Well, the synovium is trying to defend itself, right? It starts to build more and it starts to, you know, have so much excessive synovial tissue. It builds up excessive synovial fluid. Now the joint is overloaded, it's inflamed, it's swollen, it's painful. And then the cell starts to also destroy the joint area. And that's when you start to see deformities oh, happen, no. especially in advanced case rheumatoid arthritis. Now there are several stages to rheumatoid arthritis. If you've been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and you're just in the beginning stages, one of the first things that you should kind of look out for is inflammation. So there may be swelling, discomfort, some pain, but the joint isn't destroyed yet. So you may be in a good position to actually get on top of it and prevent joint destruction. Usually that's stage one. Now there's stage two. At this time, the inflammation and the cells are already attacking the cartilage in your joints. The cartilage is that white shiny area in the bone. If you ever eaten a chicken bone like I do where I break it down to the marrow okay, <laughs> and you're like eating that little white shiny crunchy biscuit bone like I like to call it and people from Nigeria like to call it. The, car the disease is already affecting that cartilage. When it's starting to affect the cartilage, now you start to have stiffness. Now you start to have decreased range of motion. The cartilage is not allowing for a nice smooth range of motion anymore. And that's where we got, it was start to get a little bit concerned because there is now some pain and decreased range of motion. In stage three, things get a little worse. Now the cartilage is gone. It's now starting to erode to the bone. And that's where you start to see deformities. And some of the most common deformities that you would see in the foot and ankle are the severe Severe bunions that you would have, the severe hammer toes, that it doesn't matter what you do, they just do not straighten out. There is nothing that you can do to help them straighten out. So those are some of the most common things you'd see. Now, other manifestations, you'd see some foot pain, heel pain, and things like that. But essentially what's happening is the bones are already starting to get affected at this point because the cartilage is gone. It's eating it away, and there's just little that we can do short of surgery. So now the joints are affected, the bones are affected, they started to erode, break down. The body is also trying to heal, mind you, during this time. Then happen is a lot of the times an end stage or stage four or severe rheumatoid arthritis 
their bones start to fuse together. When it starts to fuse together now, it's even more painful. It's more difficult because remember, these are joints. These joints are not supposed to fuse. These joints are supposed to move. They're supposed to have cartilage. They're supposed to have fluid. But now they're fused together, or at least some part of it is fused. There is extreme pain, extreme discomfort, extreme inflammation. It is just a crack show, and it is not the most pleasant stage to be in. Now, like I mentioned before, there is no known cause of rheumatoid arthritis, but there are some risk factors that you probably should be aware of. Some of the risk factors include if you are a smoker, if you're overweight, if you have a family history of rheumatoid arthritis, if you are older or a female, some of these things will predispose you to getting rheumatoid arthritis. Since it's an autoimmune disease, something usually triggers your immune system to just decide to wake up one morning and say, and I'm gonna attack your synovial fluid or your synovial joints or your synovial cells, and then things just kind of spiral down. So there is unfortunately no known cause, but there are risk factors. And if we can try to reduce those risk factors, we have a better chance of reducing the onset or development of rheumatoid arthritis. What are the general symptoms? Like we talked about, there is pain, swelling, stiffness, decreased range of motion, pain the beginning of the morning and when you start to move around it kind of gets better a little bit and there are also times where it flares up you're doing fine you're managing the discomfort and then all of a sudden something happens and then the immune system kicks into gear and just starts to attack all over again and that's when we say you're having a rheumatoid flare and other times it could be in remission the immune system and the immune cells are chilling. They're not worried about what's going on right now. They're kind of just hibernating. And that's when we say the patient is in remission. Since we know that there's no active or actual cure for rheumatoid arthritis, well, what home treatments can you do? How can you help it get better? Well, first off, rest. So rest the area so that you're not stressed, you're not triggering your immune system to kind of get it to go into gear and doing things that it's not supposed to do. So rest, rest, rest as much as possible. Of course, icing. Icing really helps with inflammation, helps with the pain and discomfort, so you can ice as much as possible. Orthotics. Orthotics or ankle braces specifically made for you or made to work with your type of foot will also help. It'll help with the reducing the movements within the joints, especially in the foot and ankle. It'll help with supporting the joint and helping cushioning the joint so it can reduce pain and inflammation for you. And like I said, over-the-counter medications that are like anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen, Advil, Motrin, Naproxen will work beautifully. Again, caveat, please check with your primary care provider. Don't start taking any medication without checking with your providers to make sure that it's not interacting with any other thing. One of my most important things and tips that I would love to share with you is the anti-inflammatory foods. Now our body is made to go through inflammatory phases and non-inflammatory phases. But did you know that there are foods that can actually trigger the inflammatory phase and there are foods that actually decrease it? So if you want me to make a little video about it, there's already a video on this channel, but I always love to make fresh new videos that kind of hones on this topic. So if you want me to make a video, please leave a comment down below and I'll get to it as soon as possible. But a few foods that I'll mention here are some omega-3 fatty acids. Those are really, really good because they're high in antioxidants. They will help to reduce the inflammation in your body. Vitamins like vitamin A, vitamin C, and vitamin E are also great and heavy in antioxidants. And they'll also help to reduce inflammation. Fiber, fiber is also a great food group that'll also help if you're eating these to kind of help the inflammation that your body is going through currently. Now you may be wondering, well, if there's no cure for rheumatoid arthritis, why am I seeing the doctor? Well, I did mention that there are some prescription medication that will help with the inflammation, will help with the pain, and actually help chill your immune system out. So it's not working in overdrive. Some disease-modifying anti-rheumatoid drugs will really, really help you. Some immunomodifying drugs will also help you. Again, stronger anti-inflammatories will help you. Now, if you see me in the clinic or another foot and ankle doctor or a specialist around your area, so one of the things that they may do is maybe give you a steroid injection. They may give you a steroid injection within the joint to, again, help to reduce the inflammation in that joint. If your joint is overflown with synovial fluid and is swollen, they can actually draw out some of that fluid to release the tension in that joint so it's not just thick and tight and taut and just causing discomfort. So those are some of the things that they could do. And of course, like I said, prescribe the medication. And as a last resort, if all of that does not work, of course there's surgery. There's surgeries that can be done depending on the stage that you come to see the doctor. So if you come to see me and your bones are fused already, 
based on how late in the stage that you are and things like that, then there are surgeries that we could do with either replacing it or fusing it properly in a proper alignment and position so it gives you a beautiful looking foot and also reduces your pain. So now you're winning in both ways. So if you're wondering about surgery, it is possible, but we like to keep it as the last option if you've exhausted all other options. So we've talked about rheumatoid arthritis, what it is, what causes it, the risk factors, some of the things that you can do at home to make it feel better. What question do you have about all of this and what surprised you the most? So out of all of these things that we've talked about, the thing that I really personally like, like I mentioned, is the diet whereby you are what you eat. If you control the inflammatory foods, then you may be able to manage the symptoms. We like to give medicine when it's necessary, but I personally believe that if you eat the right foods and live and stay in the right environment, you can really manage a lot of these diseases. That's right. If you agree with me, type down below and say, yes, doc, I agree. Food is life. Thank you so much for watching till the end. It's a five for Dr. Dr. Show. I'm the foot and ankle specialist out here in Houston, Texas. If you want to see me personally, you can visit our website, www.dnealfootandanklecenter.com or give us a call and leave a message if no one answers, 832-415-1790. What else would you like me to talk about in my next video? What else has been concerning you about foot and ankle and things that you've just kind of wondered about? Leave a comment down below and I'll get to it and answer it as soon as possible. Thank you once again. Until next time, I'll see you later. Bye. Hey, if you wanna watch one of my older videos about inflammatory foods or anti-inflammatory foods, check them out here. They're gonna be there. You can just click on them and watch it and maybe come back to this video. Let me know what you think. I'll be making a brand new video as well just to add some things that may not be in that video or just a fresher take on those videos. But if you wanted to watch the old ones that I have, they're right here. Check them out.